we should pull back the unspent money from COVID. We talk about work requirements that actually bring people to jobs. Every statistical data shows that it helps people get jobs. And we're only talking about able-bodied people who have no dependents. But let's help people get jobs to help our supply chain. The president wants to borrow more money from China to pay people to stay home. And then we're talking about getting, cutting the red tape so we can create projects. We can actually work instead of slowing every thing up. I don't think these are extreme. I don't think these are draconian. And that was House Speaker Kevin McCarthy with me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures Live. McCarthy is set to continue the debt negotiations with direct talks with President Biden later today. Uh, the speaker told me yesterday he would be speaking with the president right after he got off the air with me. President Biden said that he would be, quote, blameless if the United States defaults on its debt. He told Peter Ducey that yesterday, that he would be blameless. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman, member of the House Armed Services, Homeland Security, and Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and China. Carlos Jimenez is with us once again. Congressman, uh, why does the president think he's not going to be to blame if the U.S. defaults on its debt? That was, that was a new one yesterday. I have the faintest idea why Joe Biden would say something like that, but it doesn't surprise me. Joe Biden always says that everything he does is great and everything he does is a failure. So, uh, yeah, that's par for the course for Joe Biden. Well, President Biden wrapped up his G7 trip yesterday saying that the U.S. and China relations will, quote, quickly improve. Um, there's been no response to all of these provocations from communist China. I spoke with the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee yesterday, Michael McCall, on Sunday Morning Futures, and he uh, is sending the alarm about China's control of its supply chain, uh, basically uh, talking about what Xi Jinping said specifically himself. Watch this. They set up all these national security laws that allow them to go in and raid uh, American companies in China. But most disturbingly is a quote from Xi Jinping himself, who says, we want to get foreign nations uh, uh, dependent on our supply chains so that down the road we can cut them off from these supply chains. It's very clear what their intention is here. And, you know, we saw it after COVID with medical we see it with rare earth mineral and also semiconductors. If they can make the world dependent on them with supply chain, they also have the power to cut it off. And that came out of Chairman Xi's own mouth, out of his words. And we have to take that seriously. Congressman, what about that? Xi Jinping said that in a speech, um, exactly what Michael McCall just said. The speech was in April of 2020. And he said, we've got to enhance our superiority. Uh, across the supply chain, make the whole world reliant on us so that we can shut it off whenever it, uh, it, it, it uh, is convenient. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's what we're finding out in the Select Committee on China and the competition with China. And that for the president to say that somehow relations are going to get better with China, again, remember what I always say, never listen to what he says, watch what he does. So if he says it's going to get better, it's going to get worse. Uh, and every indication that we have is that it is going to get worse. We have the issue with Taiwan. Uh, we want our American companies to start getting out of China because I fear that eventually they'll nationalize those, uh, those enterprises. Apple is unbelievably vulnerable to, uh, to China right now. And uh, we've advised them, hey, it's time to get out because eventually China will pull that string and China will cut you off. Well, this is such an important point that you make. Investors are watching, and they may very well own Apple stock. And you just said Apple mm -hmm. is incredibly vulnerable right here. We know that China has national security laws, which enable it to just march into any company, American, Chinese, whatever company it is, they will march in there, and they will raid the company and steal their intellectual property. They just did it with Bain and Company. So what, what response have you gotten from Apple, from these warnings? Uh, well, look, Apple and other companies that they're so they're so invested. They have so much investment in uh, in uh, China. So many workers. So much of their production uh, capacity is in China that it's tough for them to get out. You know, right away. They need to because eventually it's going to cost them, uh, and it's going to cost the world. China will use its supply chain to uh, to get what it wants. It has absolutely no problem in forcing people, coercing. Uh, people and uh, companies and countries to do their bidding by simply saying, well, we're going to cut you off from this, that, and the other, including the United States of America. That's why we need to decouple from China. 
and decouple as soon as we can. They are our adversary. Every single dollar that we send to China for everything that we buy here is actually going to be used against us. Uh, we need to wake up to that fact, and we need to start acting accordingly. By the way, we're seeing this play out right now. Micron Semiconductor stock is down 5% this morning because China is now banning the U.S. chipmaker from selling to Chinese companies working on key infrastructure projects. This is a major escalation of an ongoing battle between uh, the, two, the two nations, that China is banning American company Micron Technology uh, from, from working uh, with the Cyberspace Administration of China. Uh, they announced the decision last night. And uh, the stock this morning is one of the story stocks of the morning on Wall Street. It's down 5 percent. And then you've got politics being played out against Republicans. Did you see what the NAACP is doing? Uh, is this travel advisory discouraging people from visiting Florida, claiming that Governor Ron DeSantis's policies are openly hostile toward African Americans, people of color, and LGBTQ? Uh, Congressman, what's this about? Uh, the NAACP uh, DNC? Yes, they're, they're just an arm of the DNC. Uh, they have been for quite some time, uh, and so it doesn't surprise me. It's just politics uh, as normal. Uh, look, well, we have a great state. Our governor is a great governor. Uh, obviously, it, look, you, all you have to do is how many people are moving to Florida? How many people are getting away from New York and California and Chicago? That says it all. Uh, this is the great state, the great free state of Florida. People are flooding here because they want to live here, because it's a great state to live here, to live here. And, uh, and so, you know, the NAACP uh, DNC is uh, doing everything it can to, uh, to start to, you know, tar him uh, and tar Republicans. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to work. People are going to continue to come down here. They know how great it is down here. Well, I mean, what a huge flow of people and revenue having gone to Florida <laughs> from uh, high-tax states over yeah. the last couple of years. Pretty incredible. Congressman, we're expecting Ron DeSantis to announce his presidency bid this week. Uh, it could happen on Thursday, we're told. Have you decided who you're supporting for president in 2024, Congressman? Will it be Ron DeSantis? I'm supporting the, the Republican candidate, but at this point, I've uh, thrown my, my hat in with uh, President Trump. And so, uh, at the end, this, uh, this process will work itself out. We'll have a nominee. Whoever that nominee, we're all going to get behind. But at this point, I support the president. President Trump is certainly leading in the polls, much higher than Ron DeSantis. But we'll see what happens when DeSantis announces this week. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Good seeing you, too. Carlos Jimenez joining us in Miami.